Hello, my name's Francis and I'm an artist and drawing instructor. The Royal Overseas League at Home have asked me to create a series of short instructional videos for drawing. This week we're going to be looking at hollow cylindrical objects, so if you'd like to draw along then you'll need a pencil and some paper and your favourite vase or jug. Okay, so I've set my jug up in front of me um, and before I start drawing I just want to talk about a couple of things. Um, the first is the angle and direction of the light. So my light is above to the right at about 45 degrees and it's casting a shadow which you can see on the inside of the jug um, which is, yeah, it's about 45 degrees here. It's this, it's this wall of the jug which is blocking the light and casting this shadow. Um, related to that is the shadow cast by the jug itself. Um, so if you consider the point of the spout to be 45 degrees to the right and above the end of the shadow then you'll see that the angle of the shadow here is the same as the angle of the shadow here. So that's something to remember for later. We've also got something called foreshortening, which is um, essentially when an object appears to be squashed or compressed because of um, the effect of perspective. Um, I'll talk more about that later, but it, it's essentially the idea that the height of the jug um, is less than we think it probably will be. But we'll measure that out a bit later. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is to get um, a nice outline of our drawing on the paper. Um, as I mentioned before, we're dealing with something called foreshortening. Um, and essentially what's happening in this drawing is that, say we were to hold the jug up to our eye level, we would see the height of the jug in full. And as we lower it, because we're looking over the top of the jug, as we lower it down to its position, we're increasingly looking at the jug from an over-the-top angle. And so our perception of the height of the jug um, becomes sort of squashed or shortened. The same thing, the same effect could be achieved if I hold the jug up to the camera like this. You'll see it for its full height. Um, as you start to sort of tilt the jug, so to this sort of angle, you get what's called foreshortening. So we can still read that it's, the jug is the height it is, um, but obviously when we come to draw it, we're going to have to draw it a sort of squashed or shortened version. So that's sort of what's happening here. Um, and the way to get around that, or, or to deal with that, um, or the way I'm going to get around or to deal with that, is by taking a few measurements, um, just to help. So the first thing I want to do is measure out the width of the of the opening of the top. <coughs> okay, so I'm going to put a mark sort of here, roughly sort of two thirds of the page, and that mark represents the um, the near side of the jug there. Um, so what I'm going to do is, because what I want is to find the distance between this and this as I sort of perceive it. So I'm going to do something that you've probably seen um, lots of artists do, and it's called it's called measuring, like this sort of sight size measuring. And all I'm doing is aligning the top of my pencil to this edge of the of the jug, um, and my thumb I'm going to slide up to the position of the near edge there. Um, when you do this, bear in mind you always have to keep your position constant, so my feet are in the same place. My arm is locked, so it's always going to be the same length. Um, I'm just going to gently read that measurement, so it's about there. So on the page, I'll transfer it across, so I can see that that's more or less the measurement that I read. So I'll just double check. A bit closer, maybe there. Yeah. So the next thing to do is to see how many times that measurement fits into the height of the jug overall. So I'll simply move it down to the top of the pencil is here and I'll sort of visually gauge the point where my thumb is and move it down again. Okay, so I'm reading that as twice. Um, so from the position where I'm standing at arm's length, I'm reading it to be twice, so about there. So, yeah, I mean, I think that feels kind of okay. 
Stay a bit under me, there's a tennis mic right there. Yeah. You don't have to get it right the first time, you can always sort of uh, always double check, because you never know. Uh, yeah, put a medium in there actually. Lovely. So um, when you are satisfied with that, um, you're, you know, we're sort of good to, to carry on really. So what we want to do is start by getting an idea of the, of the opening. So if this is the sort of centre point, because it's circular, I know that it's halfway there, it's halfway there, well, about there, and under there. Um, it's going to be roughly the same to there, and obviously the spout comes in. So yeah. But um, I'm not trying to be sort of super accurate. Sort of sketch, just get an idea really. So yeah, I'll we go putting these curves around. Um, Great, okay, so I'm, I'm all right with that sort of general idea. Obviously I'll probably tidy it up, I'll probably, um, you know, make it sort of slightly more accurate as I go along, but to begin with, that's okay. Um, next I want to get an idea of where the handle sort of comes in, so just thinking across from the start. Oh, you can make that slightly smaller. Yeah. Um, yeah, so the start's sort of coming in right here. I'm using, I'm actually using the side of the pencil lead here um, to create a slightly sort of broader mark, rather than sort of using the very end and being sort of like, oh, it's exactly that. I'm using the side to be sort of a little bit more general with it, a little bit sort of broader. So that's where the handle starts to come in. So in order to get the body of the jug in, the belly of the jug, Let's start, start down here because I know where that's going to be. And it is a curve, you know, there's no straight edge here, it's all curved. In fact, this, the outline of the belly is going to be a sort of, a sweeping sort of curve that comes around like that. No corners at all, and some curves up here. Um, and the trick obviously is getting that, getting that curve sort of believable. I'm going to be nice and broad again, because I may not guess it right first time, but we'll see. So when I'm doing this, I'm sort of thinking in relation of this curve to sort of this curve, say. Um, and I'm doing that by, by sort of visually gauging it in the subject, and just trying to copy that across. I'm thinking, okay, well, if there's a vertical line coming up from this side here, where would it intersect the handle? Probably about there. So maybe that's as far as out, out as I want to come. Yeah, carry on down through there. Lovely, okay, that seems, that seems all right. That seems okay. Uh, right, so the other side. Can I sort of bring the spout down a little bit? I can see that that's what happened. And then I think it's about sort of here. Obviously this um, the side of the jug is actually related to what we're seeing on the inside. Um, and the walls of the jug aren't even going to be so thick. But I can actually see on the inside there is a semicircle that curves around where, um, basically it's where the jug changes shape. It's the sort of shoulder thing, let's say. Maybe it's, maybe it's more like here. So if I... Uh, yeah, if I put that in now, then it's going to help me decide where the outside of the jug changes shape as well, because it's all related. It's just the wall sort of following through that shape. 
Right, so if there's a vertical line coming down from the spout, we're definitely on the inside of that, so must be about there. Great. Yeah, okay, well that, that, that's all right to start with. Maybe actually I want to bring out the um, want to bring this out a bit more. Particularly with um, drawings that deal with the perspective and foreshortening. Um, don't feel like you have to get it right the first time. There's often a bit of moving around to sort of deal with things. Um, so I mean that's why it's useful to have, you know, the other drawing implement, very useful drawing implement, which is the rubber. Um, I wouldn't sort of use it to so much for getting rid of mistakes, but to sort of drive a, a drawing forward. We always want to be making positive forward sort of progress with it. So it's like changing this curve, putting it into the right place, rather than sort of stepping back and saying, oh, that wasn't quite right, so I'll get rid of that. More about moving it, moving it forward. I think that's how you have to think about it. Um, great, okay. So to get the handle in the right place, I'm going to first of all think about this, it's called negative shape, um, so it's the area of space inside the handle. I'm going to start with that because it's a small estimation of scale and it's always easier if you can to first off establish the smaller estimations because they're easier to gauge and then once you've built up a few of those smaller shapes the larger ones are just the easier because they tend to sort of follow the smaller ones. So, here we are, I'm just going to bring this up through here. Lovely. So, what we've got now is the effect of the perspective also on the handle. Um, so it's another three-dimensional object in, in space that we're looking at. So I'm just going to sort of have a look at what, it, what it's doing. Um, and obviously we've got the near underside here, it's curving around and then coming in front of this, this edge here, so all the way down to about there. Um, so I'm going to copy that across. Um, and so it's this edge here that then continues past the far side and it, and it curves it down underneath here. Things like three dimensional handles can at first appear to be quite complicated but if you take them apart into their sort of relative components then and just do it slowly then, then it's not too tricky really. It's about taking the time to sort of think about it I think. So that's curving around underneath. Um, what else have we got? We've got, so there's also, you can see this highlight here. That's a nice consistent curve coming all the way down to the bottom, so we'll put that in. Um, starting, I'll start down there. Uh, you could start at the top, equally, doesn't matter. Following that, Now, the far side curve follows parallel to this, to about here. So I'll put that in. And then as it, as it curves around, it actually joins, it goes underneath, underneath the other side. Um, and so it sort of turns away from us. Um, obviously the handle is you know, turning consistently, so it's this edge here and and the, oh, and the outside edge here are sort of related because it curved underneath that, um, essentially. So that's something to bear in mind. Yeah. 
say something like that. And then obviously, yes, the edge is sort of carrying on down there, which we can't, which you can't really see. Um, lovely, so that's the handle, more or less. I mean, I'll tidy all this up later, but when we start to put the toe in. Okay, great, so I'm gonna bash on with the shadows quickly. Um, so as you remember, there's a sort of 45 degrees shadow cast along the inside. Um, so to get that, I'm just gonna find what what point around um, this curve uh, does that sh shadow start, it's right there. Um, and it follows all the way through. So yeah, it's more or less like that. Maybe it's not quite 45, but it's, it's something similar. Um, because of this, because of this curve, uh, demonstrating the sort of shoulder, um, everything inside the belly of the jug is in shadow. So I'm going to actually just hack that across. Let's just put that into shadow right right now at the start. Um, what else did we say? Well, there's a shadow obviously cast by the jug itself, and actually I'm going to change that to right there. And that's similar. So that should be a very similar angle to. The, this shadow, so if that's that, then it will be sort of about there. Yeah, which seems good. Um, slightly higher, so I can see that compared to this side of the handle, um, the point where the shadow starts is yeah, it's sort of fairly similar, it's probably about there. Um, it's almost a right angle, but it's probably more acute than that, so we're coming up to here, I think. So now I just want to. Yeah. I'm going to do it about there. It's a nice soft bit of shadow, that. So I'm going to try and avoid drawing some too many edges as I establish the shape. Right. So obviously it curves around there. Lovely. Okay. So let's call that the yeah. Let's call that the shadow there. So that's good. And I'm just yeah. I'll finish. I'll I'll tone that in. Just to get out of the way. Um, what we've got on the body of the jug itself is um, it's not quite, I mean, you might, it, it's easy to think that it would be a sort of straight down, this is where the light is, this is where the shadow is, but because you've got this, um, this curve, the shape of the jug itself, and the shadow follows that shape. So actually, it's not quite so simple. I think the shadow comes in about here. I squint and it's easier to see this. And it sort of it sort of follows the curve, the curve of the belly of the jug like that. Yeah. Maybe even like that really. Lovely, okay. Something like so. Um there's nuances to the shadow and I will have a look at those in more you know more closely a little bit later on, but for now we're going to hatch it in. Also the inside of the handle is away from the light, so that's also, that's also going to be toned in as shadow. Um, great, so <laughs> that's the tricky bit of perspective and the um, shapes the shadows put in. Um, so I'm happy with that. And now the next stage is to crack on with uh, defining and refining those those tones, so so that's great.
So I feel like I'm sort of nearing the end of the journey now. Um, I've been working on this drone for probably about 45 minutes um, in total. I'll just speed it up for the video, of course. Um, when you make yours, don't feel like you need to rush. You know, it's your drawing. Take as long or as, as little time as, as you wish. Um, just going to soften up this little that diagonal edge and just going to sort of further this out a little bit. I'm sort of very aware that I could keep on going with this drawing for absolutely ages if I if I didn't sort of stop myself. So I am going to, I'm going to say it's probably about time to sort of um, put the pencil down, I think, because I've got, yeah, I've got more or less what I want out of it. I think I've got a, you know, an idea of the light. Um, I've got the form, I've got the perspective. Um, and these are all things that we've looked at in the video. We've looked at the foreshortening, of course. Um, and, you know, how to draw a handle in space. That's quite a, that was quite a difficult thing. Um, so yeah, so I feel like we've done quite a lot and I hope that this has been uh, informative and enjoyable and that your drawing have, have come along very well at home if you're drawing along. So thank you very much.